uh, many of the folks that were involved in starting ZV had previous startup experience. Uh, primarily uh, engineering folks, uh, a group of uh, real smart people uh, put this product together and uh, we've been growing ever since. A strong effort in R&D and R&D continues today. Uh, the HDB 2920 is actually our third major product release of 2014. And then uh, we've actually have a couple new products that uh, you all might be interested in. Uh, probably the end of first quarter will be uh, the release for those, so stay tuned. Uh, we're a growing enterprise. I mean, uh, you know, year, year over year sales growth is compared to some of our competitors that are either stagnant or in a state of decline. So our uh, highly experienced team for, for our sales channel, uh, sales uh, are, are driven through value added distributors just like BTX to dealers and AV integrators just like you. So uh, we are highly dependent upon you because we don't sell uh, our current lines direct. And so, you know, please let us know if there's anything that we can do to empower you, to, to give you additional support. Uh, you know, that's what the sales group, uh, myself in the West, uh, Roy in the Central, and Sally in the East, I mean, that's what we're really here for, to support your sales efforts. ZB offers a five-year warranty. Uh, you know, we can do this with less than a 5% failure rate a strong belief in our products and also a, a high confidence in our manufacturing process. So we turn all that around and present that back to you in the context of a five-year warranty. We're an international company, uh, offices in Boston, Denver, and London. Uh, we're actually the largest manufacturer of digital modulators in North America today. And lastly, we are made in America, uh, New Hampshire to be exact. So our local manufacturing here in the U.S. makes us very nimble in terms of updating our products. Local manufacturing also allows for a much higher level of quality control. And then lastly, I mean, there are many levels of certifications held by our local manufacturers. Uh, we brought manufacturing back, I believe it was early last year from China, and uh, we've seen a, a dramatic improvement in the quality of our products again, uh, as well as our flexibility in terms of tweaking anything that might need to be changed. So, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of these uh, webinars, uh, presentations, trainings, and ultimately, especially when I'm out in the field in person, I ended up passing around uh, my iPhone so people could see these pictures. So uh, I just decided to incorporate these in, um, in what I do, and it's, you know, it's kind of interesting. So this is, uh, this is how the other guys do it. I mean, this is not a ZV product, and, um, but it is advertised as made in America. So the other thing that you'll notice is with the cabling here, you'll see many potential points of failure. You see the plastic ties. I mean, this is not high quality manufacturing standards. Uh, you also see around the edges here, you'll notice there, there is no cooling mechanism for this box. So we at ZV, I mean, we know that heat kills electronics. We'll show you in the next picture of how we, uh, how we address this problem. But uh, that's an issue. Uh, that's an issue with this product. Also, if you notice, the major components in this, uh, in this box, these are what we refer to as Dexing boards. Uh, these are made in a factory in China, a company called Dexing. And while we have no problem with technology or manufacturing coming out of China, uh, we do have some issues, I guess, with something like this being advertised as made in America. So what I can tell you is that this is assembled in America, and it's also assembled with a glue gun. So you see some glue gun residue here. Uh, you can see a line coming across here. And this is, frankly, again, substandard uh, manufacturing standards, uh, putting together electronic components with a glue gun. Uh, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't deploy this kind of product in my customer's premises. I mean, you're putting your customer uh, at risk with a deployment of this type of product. And this is how ZV does it. So, you know, you see one, you know, you see one board. You see minimal points of failure with, uh, with how the cabling is managed here. You also see a power supply that is segregated from the main board uh, and then the two fans. This box is frankly over-engineered for its intended purposes. We can uh, work with you or the end user in the field to troubleshoot this unit. We can tell what the temperature is at five different points. 
in this unit, we can also actually tell what the RPMs uh, are on these fans. So uh, much different standard, uh, again, made in America, and this is how and why we're able to offer a five-year warranty. So uh, ZV's flagship line, the HD Bridge 2000 series and the new HDB 2920 is part of that. So what this allows for is high-density uh, video distribution over coax. I mean, it's a smarter, easier way to get this done. So a little bit uh, of background, uh, ZV encoder modulators, I mean, they basically convert uh, video sources such as digital signage, uh, a, a satellite receiver, a cable receiver, or any other kind of content device into a cable channel, into a digital cable channel, that can then be broadcast out over existing cabling to an unlimited number of high-definition televisions. So what you get in the process is a crystal clear HD or SD digital signal over the existing infrastructure with no need to rewire or add the cost or complexity of a matrix switch, uh, plus the balance at each display uh, that are required in that situation. I mean, just adding the balance at each display adds two potential points of failure uh, for each display in the network. Plus, our standard QAM output can be received by any off-the-shelf high-definition television. So you don't need to worry about specialized TVs, ProIdium, encryption, or decryption. I mean, it just doesn't uh, exist with uh, clear QAM modulation provided by ZV. So ZV's products have steadily evolved over time from a single channel, like commercial-grade modulator, to a robust, fully managed, high-density encoder modulator for deployments requiring a rich mix of analog, SD digital, and or HD digital channels. So environments such as hospitality, healthcare, broadcast, educational campuses, multi-dwelling units, and the list goes on, they all require more channels and less space, full management, and simplified deployments. The new HD Bridge 2000 series was ZV. I mean, we really answer, uh, we answer this call. So. Uh, the two product lines that we currently have, one, ZV Pro. Uh, this is a uh, slightly smaller form factor than our HD Bridge, and this comes in one and two channel counts with a myriad of uh, source inputs allowed. So this is typically used for digital signage or say that there's an RF distribution system already in place and the customer wants to insert an additional source. So this is typically used in retail, corporate environments, you know, public viewing areas. That's uh, our ZV Pro. Our HD Bridge 2000 series, uh, this is typically used for high-density video distribution. So sports bars, hospitals, broadcast stations, and I don't necessarily need to read this list to you, but this type of uh, application. So if you have a specific project that you are considering ZV, whether it's the new 2920 uh, or our other bridge products, and you'd like to hear about a specific application, you know, get with BTX or uh, certainly feel free to give me a call. Uh, we don't know every last deployment of uh, ZV products, but we can give you some ideas in terms of what is being done in the field. So, uh, Kim, any, any questions so far? Hopefully we're still. Sorry going. about that, Scott. <laughs> I no, that's okay. Muted, so there was no background noise. Um, we haven't had any questions coming as of yet, so you okay. can carry on. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, SDI technology. So most of most of you on this call, I mean, you understand SDI, but for those who might not, we want to hit on a several high points here. So, otherwise known as serial digital interface. This was a standard that was brought out by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers really as a mechanism or a process to transition to high definition uh, television. Typically it's a standard used in broadcast, uh, broadcast venues, concert venues, um, sporting events, anywhere uh, high end, high standard uh, video production and or broadcast is taking place. The SDI standard, uh, they're used for transmission of uncompressed, unencrypted digital video, uh, video signals. So that's, uh, that's typically uh, the environment and that's how this format works. The HDB2920 uh, allows for two channels of SDI input 
Uh, now that SDI input could be SDSDI, HDSDI, excuse me, HDSDI, or 3G uh, SDI. Allows for uh, SDI loop through, so you can take your SDI product into one of our encoder modulators, send it out over the RF dis uh, distribution system, but you can also loop it out and take your uh, take your clean SDI signal into an SDI monitor or some other type of distribution within your facilities that require the, um, the SDI signal. So resolution, we also will pass up to 1080p resolution uh, with this unit and we'll pass Dolby Digital. Uh, notice the delayed matched audio. So what this allows for in the first input, this will allow for basically latency correction up to 2,000 milliseconds. So for instance, uh, just give you an idea of how and why this might be used, if you were taking the audio out of the first channel, maybe into a whole house uh, audio system, uh, you might need some additional latency correction and that's what that uh, is provided for. So this uh, also allows for full EAS or alert, uh, excuse me, emergency alert system compa uh, compatibility and integration uh, and this has been released uh, this year. So some of the other features, the 2920, uh, the two-channel SDI input, uh, auto-sensing encoder modulator, all in one RU. This is the front and back view of the unit. Uh, SDI loop-through, um, I talked about that earlier. Unified architecture, so if you have deployed uh, ZV gear in the past and you have, you, know, you have some expertise, I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot because the, the onboard uh, GUI interface maestro is very intuitive. But if you've deployed ZB in the past, I mean, you're an expert, and so you're an expert for 2920. Unified architecture, uh, same form factor, same look and feel, other than the number, uh, the number on the front, and then the inputs on the back, this is just going to look and operate just like your other, uh, your other ZB modulators. Up to 1080p resolution pass-through with Dolby Digital, uh, made in America with a five-year warranty. Also includes the ZB enhanced features uh, specifically at, uh, of note here would be the ZV show. So in addition to the two channels of input uh, modulation that you have here, you also have an additional channel, uh, what we call ZV show, which allows for an, a, a third channel of modulation uh, that uh, is digital signage. So you can upload a file up to 250 megs and create a Barker channel on the system for instance, if this is in your studio and you have a client coming in or a guest, you know, you could have for the day, you could have a welcome channel for that individual or for that company, that type of application or an employee channel. Now, uh, uh, the ZV Show, keep in mind, you're going to have a ZV Show capability, an extra channel for every modulator that is deployed uh, by ZV, uh, every ZV modulator that you deploy. Excuse me. So. Some of the applications, uh, broadcast, uh, certainly broadcast venues are were, were currently used in uh, several broadcast uh, situations throughout the country, and I'll, I'll note some of those uh, on the next slide. Security, uh, any type of security system that might use SDI uh, within the broadcast facilities, oftentimes uh, there is a master antenna television system that, that is used. Uh, you can use the ZV Pro uh, HDB 2920 to integrate any uh, SDI source. Uh, concert venues, retirement communities, live sporting events, any type of uh, situation where you might have SDI source that you need to uh, distribute via RF distribution over coax. Uh, camera feeds, so ca camera feeds could be an SDI. Um, source of uh, RHDB 2920 was specifically brought to market based on conversations that we've had with our customers. Uh, most of those conversations were in the broadcast areas, you might expect. They had already been using our gear, and again, I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a minute. Uh, typically, those broadcast facilities were taking their SDI um, before the HDB 2920. They were taking their SDI into an SDI to HDMI converter and then using our HDB 2840, which is a, a four-channel HDMI input box um, to use uh, for their modulation. So current deployments, uh, CBS New York City uh, uses uh, ZV to distribute uh, video over their uh, MATV system. 
uh, NBC in Boston. Now that NBC station is using uh, our uh, our HDB 2840 is the four channel HDMI input unit that I spoke of. They're going, they're taking their SDI source, they're going into a converter and then out over RF distribution and that, uh, that method. So with this new box, we eliminate the need for, uh, well, a couple of points of failure uh, with the uh, converter that's that was required. In addition, uh, the cost of the converter. So that's what we're eliminating here. Uh, Univision uh, KMEX uh, in LA is using ZV. And again, just like NBC in Boston, their SDI source, they were using a converter to go into, actually in their case, they were going into one of our uh, high definition uh, component input encoder modulators. So with a lot of these broadcast stations, they have, they have many SDI sources that never make it to air. But they want to, uh, they want to distribute those speeds over their MATV system so their staff, their production staff, uh, sales group, their executives, they're all aware of what's available and what's going on at any given time uh, via these various speeds. AT&T Park, uh, the home of the San Francisco Giants in San Francisco, uh, the dealer that deployed ZV in that environment, uh, they are using ZV to distribute 36 high-definition televisions to over two, uh, 3,000, 3,000 displays in that park. So they do have some SDI mixed in there. I believe those two sources of SDI. Uh, they, again, are going into a converter and then converting the SDI. I believe in their example, they, uh, the, yeah, this example they're going into uh, one of our component input uh, modulators. NFL Network. NFL Network has a pretty robust MATV system on their campus in Culver City. Uh, they, I think it was 60-some channels of modulation on like eight SDI sources, and in their case, they are like NBC. They're going into an SDI to HDMI converter and then using our 2840. So there's many examples where SDI is being used and broadcast and then uh, being converted to distribute over our RF distribution system. And this is, uh, you know, this uh, some of the feedback that we received in terms of creating and um, putting this product together for market. So how it works, just kind of a brief overview. This is kind of a, a simplified system, but over here you've got uh, six sources. You've got four sources, high definition, say a satellite or cable receiver going into our 2640, which allows up to 1080p resolution. And then you've got a couple of SDI sources here going into our new uh, HDB 2920, <clears throat> excuse me, out into a combiner uh, over distribution. Uh, into a splitter, and again, out to as many displays that there are on the network. No need for any kind of special devices at the display. Simply an HDTV uh, will suffice. Uh, the HDTVs uh, all include a quantum tuner, so um, we take advantage of that. Uh, you'll spend more time, you know, in terms of programming the system, you'll actually spend more time scanning the, the displays than you will anything. So one of the things, you heard me mention a matrix switch, which I'm sure most of you have had experience with in the past. Um, you heard me mention that earlier in the presentation. So this, as compared to that kind of solution, this offers an incredible amount of scalability. So if you want to add sources, you simply add the source, uh, add the modulator, uh, modulation uh, capacity if you don't already have it. You go out into your combiner, excuse me, combiner, out over distribution. Uh, again, you would have to add the channel <clears throat> at the display, but um, totally scalable. Add a display. Uh, all you have to do is uh, add a splitter and an F connector and you're off to the races. You'll spend more time actually hanging the display than you will programming uh, programming the channel into the ZV uh, distribution system. I uh, hope that makes sense for you. Uh, Kim, just checking in. Any questions to this point? Okay, I'm rolling along. I'm sorry, it takes me a couple of clicks to get there. So I understand. There's no questions. <laughs> all right. So all right, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the questions. So, really, yeah, and I'd uh, encourage all of the attendees to uh, to ask any questions, even um, if it's off topic on something else about DV or an application you have that uh, you may need some guidance on. While we have Scott on the line, it's a good opportunity to pick his brain and use his expertise. 
Okay, rolling along. All right, so this is a, you've heard me talk about Maestro. This is a couple screenshots of Maestro. So with Maestro, you can configure one device at a time, if you wish, or the entire head end in minutes. Uh, it's really quite simple. A couple of things I point out here is the RF assignment. Uh, you can auto-populate uh, the RF assignment. So you, uh, you assign your first one, and you, know, you hit the auto-populate button, and it auto-populates the RF. Same thing with the virtual channels. Uh, in addition, with the virtual channels, you can use whole numbers if you wish. You don't have to use minor numbers. Uh, our modulators default to 45 dB out. However, they can be adjusted to, uh, down to 25 dB and 1 dB increments. In addition, if you look at this bigger screen, at least the portion of the bigger screen in the back here, that's a very intuitive system. You can see the temperature listed here. Uh, also, on uh, the messages, it, it will tell you where you are with each device. I mean, this device here uses a different firmware revision than some of the other devices in the head end. to give you a heads up on that. Um, and then there are no other problems detected. If there is an issue with source, I mean, device name longe longevity is assigned to more than one device. So it will really, it's really quite intuitive in terms of telling you what potential problems exist before you actually uh, deploy the system or, or deploy your, your, your network, especially the display end. You can connect locally or remotely from any browser excuse me, from any, any browser-based device. So uh, <clears throat> locally or remotely, you hook an Ethernet cable. If this is on the network, you simply, uh, you simply get online, open a browser, type in the IP address. On the front screen of uh, the ZV boxes, there is an IP address listed. You, t you type that into your web address, uh, type in your, your password, and you're off to the races. You're in the system. You also use Maestro to program, upload your media for the ZV Show channel. Uh, there are some other enhanced features uh, to include EAS integration as well as uh, set-top box control. So you can do all that locally or remotely simply using uh, any web-based uh, browser device. One glance tells you the, in uh, the entire configuration of the head end. Uh, so uh, I am not an engineer, and I could uh, deploy a ZV system using Maestro, it's, it's really slick. I mean, my hat's off to the engineers, and we get, we get continual feedback from our dealers uh, in terms of Maestro, how easy it is to, to use, and how quick, and, uh, how quick it is to deploy in the field. So it's, uh, it's good stuff. Can I so, uh, you uh, you 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 uh, Sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So no. a couple of questions did come in. So okay. one question is, how many available QAM channel settings are there in the programming? Oh, that's a great question. I had that memorized. 160. I can get back to you with an exact number, but it's it's a, it's, a, it's up in the mid hundreds. I think it's 164 QAM channels are available. I mean, really, in terms of scalability, that you heard, heard me refer to before, I mean, the lowest common denominator is capacity on the network. Uh, you can um, you can compress and assign two channels to a QAM. Uh, you want to be somewhat strategic in how you do that. Uh, some channels are more uh, data intensive than others. As an example, you, you may not think of it, but CNBC is a data rich. Uh, data rich channel. I mean, if you look at the channel, you've got four or five moving parts on the channel, and there it is a very uh, data intensive stream that is sent out uh, over the system for CNBC. So you wouldn't want to put CNBC on the same qualm with Bloomberg or ESPN. I mean, you want to be very strategic. So you can compress. Uh, I know of systems uh, that have been deployed using ZV with more than 100 channels uh, on the system. So sorry I couldn't answer that specifically, but I, I can get, Kim, I can get back to you uh, on an exact number. Sure, no problem, no problem. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, amplification? Sure. So, you know, in, in, you know, in many sports bar environments, depending on the footprint of the network, you come out 40 dB, excuse me, 45 dB from the head end, oftentimes amplification is not required. 
Uh, where you want to be at the display is zero dBs plus or minus 10. So you kind of, you know, you have a 20, 20 dB range there. So uh, each combiner, two to one split, uh, excuse me, two to one uh, combination, you lose 3.5 dB. Uh, every splitter, uh, two, uh, one to, you know, one to two uh, split, you're going to lose 3.5 dB. So uh, 100 feet, 100 feet of distribution, the rule of thumb is 5 dB loss. So standard RF, uh, RF architecture, RF rule standards apply in terms of signal loss. But the ultimate goal is to be at 0 dB at that display, plus or minus 10 dB. Excellent. Excellent. The next question we, we had um, was about set-top box control. Can you elaborate on the statement that you made about controlling it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't elaborate. So right now, this set-top box control is only limited to our HD product. So we do have uh, we do have a standard definition product called our HDB2312. It's 12 channels and one RU, uh, 480i resolution. Uh, great picture, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but it is not available currently in that unit, but will be, mm, I'd say, within 60 days. So the set-top box control applies to the DirecTV H29, excuse me, H25 specifically, okay? I am told that it works on some of the other DirecTV receivers, but you would want to be cognizant of the, of the fact that we support and we, you know, the spec is the H25 receiver uh, specifically. So within Maestro, uh, you can program, uh, you can attach a receiver to a <clears throat> one of our inputs. And so what that will allow you to do, for instance, remotely, if you're if you're heading a set up on the network and you get a call from your customer and they say, you know what, we've got Home and Garden uh, on channel 10. Uh, and we don't watch it. Nobody watches it on a system, and really what we need is we are getting requests time after time for NBC, our uh, CS, CNBC. So we're getting requests for CNBC, and that's what people are watching, that's what people want. And so you can actually, rather than rolling a truck, you could actually make that change remotely. Uh, if, you, if you wanted to have, say, a couple idler uh, receivers on the network, <clears throat> and uh, you had a receiver, an H25 go down, or you had a problem, not likely, but certainly you, you, know, you could have a problem with, uh, with a ZV modulator. You could actually power up an H25 remotely and insert it and program it into the system uh, without a truck roll. I mean, something happens on a Friday night, Certainly, you don't necessarily want to roll a truck to your customer's premises. You know, maybe temporary fix. You get them up and running uh, with remote control, uh, STB control, um, and then you go out uh, on location Monday, Tuesday next week. Great. Um, what is the maximum number of inputs to a ZV unit? Okay, so you know we have in our product line our HD Bridge 2000. We have two, four, uh, uh, two, uh, two and four channel input encoder modulators, and we also have a 12 channel. And those those configurations are all in one RU. Uh, so we have the 12 channel is specific to standard definition digital, uh, 480i resolution. Uh, our other modulators we have a, a 2500 series that is 720p up to 720p and then we also have uh, the uh, 2600 series which is up to 1080p and kind of the odd man out is our 2840 it is for four channels uh, of input unencrypted HDMI input so again keep in mind with every one of these devices whether they're two channel four channel or 12 channel you're going to have an additional channel uh, for the ZV show. It's not an input channel, but it is a, uh, say, a Barker channel or digital signage capability that your end user can uh, utilize uh, for distribution of other types of information. 
Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Scott. I think that was the end of the questions. Okay. Roll her on. I'm, I'm almost through here. So the ZV Sync. So we've, we've had deployments in, for instance, um, well, casinos. Uh, senior living. Senior living is a great example. So senior living, all the folks bring their own TVs. So you're going to have an incredible assortment of displays. Prior to 2006, uh, not every HDTV had a uh, quantum tuner. Most did, but not everyone did. Uh, also, not all quantum tuners are created equal. So we had, uh, we are used a lot in senior living. Uh, and so we came out with the ZV Sync, a great, uh, great uh, item for techs that, you know, have a handful of these in their toolbox. You know, if you do have someone who's got a substandard palm tuner, you can deploy, uh, excuse me, deploy a ZV Sync and, you know, uh, obviously manage that, uh, that issue. I've seen casinos with monitors that don't include quantum tuners. Typically projectors don't include quantum tuners. So these are the types of applications, whereas uh, you'd be able to uh, kind of create a fix uh, with the ZV Sync Quantum Tuner. It does come with a remote, uh, and you know, here are good things, especially when you're deploying these uh, in an environment that includes a ZV modulation. So key takeaways uh, was with the HD Bridge 2000 series, uh, great for high density channel distribution. A much better space efficiency with up to 12 channels on one RU. Uh, also, something I didn't mention, there are no stacking requirements. With the HD Bridge uh, 2000 series, you can stack these, uh, you can stack these encoder modulators one on top of the other uh, without any requirement for any space in between. Robust management uh, with uh, remote management via the Maestro interface, uh, and again, intuitive, uh, intuitive programming and deployment. Uh, with uh, the capabilities that we've included. Superior sound quality with Adobe, uh, the Adobe Digital, faster deployment with, uh, again, the Maestro capability, and then greater flexibility with inputs. I mean, uh, the two, the four-channel uh, unit, the 12-channel unit with the, uh, the SD, so you can do composite uh, input, component input, unencrypted HDMI input, and now with the new HD Bridge 2920, you can do the SDI input. So huge flexibility with the ZV product. All made in America with a five-year warranty, as we spoke before. So what's next? Uh, take a test drive. Uh, ZV.com, right-hand side, there's a take a test drive. We'll get with DTX, and we can get any of these units out to you for you to either test in your lab, or you could deploy the customer's premises so they can see the difference in picture quality. Uh, after the first of the year, we will have 2920s available. Not sure how many uh, will be available for demo, uh, but we do have uh, a, a demo pr uh, program that's free to you. Uh, would cost you the shipping back, uh, whether it be to BTX or ZV. Place of pre-order with, uh, with BTX. Uh, the 2920, uh, 2920s are now available uh, in limit, limited quantities. We had a limited production run this month and go into full production on January 1st. So uh, ZV.com is an awesome resource for everything ZV. Uh, so there's some case studies, uh, some application examples, uh, specs on all of our products. It's a great resource for anything ZV. Uh, you also have your VTX rep that can be tapped for additional ZV information. And then we have a Western Regional uh, Sales Guide of course, that's me, uh, out here in God's country. And then Roy handles uh, flyover country, the central, and Sally has been on, uh, on the East Coast for several years now. So very capable uh, individuals here to support you, whether it's a distributor or the dealer. You know, we want to provide you with whatever support that you need uh, that you need in the field uh, in terms of deploying ZV. Uh, great tech support too. Open uh, to 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's an in-house tech support group. Uh, I mean, I, all I hear is great things. Uh, they can get you up and running in case uh, the, the maestro or whatever is not, uh, you know, is giving you troubles or one of our units. Also at ZV.com, there's some training resources uh, that's available as well uh, with videos and presentations and all kinds of stuff, so uh, it's all good. 
And then uh, thank you for taking this time. We're a little over with the questions, but certainly I'm, uh, I'm available too if there are any other additional questions, Kim. Um, and my uh, information on the previous screen, uh, certainly feel free to uh, call me or uh, email me with any additional questions, uh, and I would love to be able to do that for you. So, uh, Kim, any other questions at all or anything I can help anybody with uh, before we adjourn? Yep, absolutely. We have one last question um, sure. about, ZV, about the ZV show feature. Um, can you talk about how that works a little bit? And uh, one last thing is thank you very, very much, Scott, for spending the time. Um, I have popped up onto the screen now BTX's contact information. Um, like Scott mentioned, uh, www.zv.com is a great resource to learn more about the product. Um, but, uh, you know, we also have uh, regional sales guys all around the country who are available to help with your ZV, with your ZV needs. So. Okay. I'll let you take it away about the uh, ZV Show. So, so the ZV Show allows for up to a 250 meg uh, file. So whatever your media is, whatever your movie is, your movie format, there is a utility uh, on the ZV website. Uh, also, Kim, after this, uh, after this uh, call here, I'll email you. Um, I'll email you some instructions on ZV Show. Uh, it's I think five pages, but it's it's page by you know it's it's point by point, so it's uh, it's pretty clear. So basically, there's a utility that you use to convert your file, your movie file, to a uh, you know .zv file. And once you have that file converted, then you can upload to the Maestro <coughs> using Maestro, excuse me, up to the ZV box. And uh, and then you would schedule that. You would assign it a virtual channel. It is going to automatically put ZV Show on one of the. Uh, well, it's going to put it on the first uh, the first RF that's assigned to the first input. It's going to share that channel with whatever that source is. So the RF assignment is going to be automatic. But the virtual channel you can put on channel 100 or wherever you want to put it on your lineup, uh, and then it will automatically play. Uh, once someone, you know, it's, it's playing all the time, but once someone tunes in at the display end, they'll see that. One other capability with the ZV Show that's coming uh, is you'll notice on our HD Bridge 2000 series units, there is an SD card slot. It's covered up currently, but there is an SD card slot. Eventually, <clears throat> we're going to allow people to upload their media locally by uh, using that SD card slot. I, I, I mean, I think I mean, I guess that will add some flexibility. Uh, I guess that will be nice, but I think you have everything you need, whether you do it locally or remotely, uh, hooking up an Ethernet cable with your laptop. I mean, the media is going to be on your laptop anyway. I'm not so sure that the SD card offers a whole lot more convenience or not, but uh, maybe the SD card will offer a, a bigger media file to be played. Maybe you can, you'll can you be able to stick it in there and, and, and it'll just play it off the SD card. Not sure. We haven't fleshed all that out yet, but that capability will be launched sometime in 2015. Excellent. 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 One last reminder about the SmartPy program. Again, uh, you've got today until uh, and you know you can certainly order anything on uh, any ZV products on the BTX website. And you've got until uh, today, seven o'clock Eastern, to place any orders, and then all day Monday. So uh, to qualify for the rebate, Scott, thank you very, very much. Thank you for going over a little bit, and thank you for everybody out there who hung with us uh, for 45 minutes. I really appreciate it, and uh, I wish everybody a very happy holiday season. We do have one last webinar for 2014, and we're going to be talking about at Mona outside of the boardroom and the classroom. So hopefully you can join us next week for that webinar, and then I will see you again in 2015. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again, everybody. Bye now.